very much, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member Lindner and other members of the subcommittee. I welcome the opportunity to address the job situation and the challenges of long-term unemployment because I fear our elected leaders and the chattering classes are accepting the unacceptable. That is, unemployment will be unacceptably high for the foreseeable future, in my view, and very little is being done to alter that reality. In such circumstances, we can expect to have many people unemployed for very long periods of time and to exhaust the 99 weeks of unemployment insurance. Our nation has no real safety net other than food stamps, so we must build out our safety net to help those. Uh, we also need to pursue a vigorous jobs agenda since what the unemployed and the nation needs is to quickly lower unemployment and fill the huge jobs hole that's been created. So let me go into the job situation. The economic growth we face will barely cover the growth of the labor force, and it won't lower the unemployment rate much. We will see 10 percent unemployment uh, a year from now. Over the course of 2010, roughly a third of the workforce and roughly 40 percent of minority workers will be unemployed or underemployed at some point during the year. Even two years from now, unemployment will be roughly 8 percent, a rate higher than the worst moments of the last two recessions. Given this situation, it is necessary to do much more to generate jobs, since it's clear that the private sector, as Representative Linder cited, will not be providing sufficient jobs on its own. We will need very fast growth if we're lucky enough to get back to 5 percent unemployment uh, in 2015. Let me discuss the deficits for a second. To create more jobs in the short run will necessarily mean having higher deficits in the next few years. David Walker, president of the Peterson Foundation and a well-known deficit hawk, wrote an op-ed with me in February, arguing that our short-term deficits should not be the focus of concern because they are necessary. Rather, deficit concerns should be focused on the longer-term structural deficits. We argued that job creation is the immediate priority, and this will mean higher deficits in the short term. Uh, since measures taken now to generate jobs will have very little effect on long-term deficits, one should not invoke fear about deficits as a way to avoid creating jobs now. In fact, deficit reduction and job creation are complementary strategies. Creating jobs and more taxpayers now is the way to move the fiscal situation to a healthier place. Let's talk about generating jobs. Some policymakers seem to be saying that they have no appetite for doing more, that they're tired of dealing with job creation and unemployment. I dare say that that's true of American families who are certainly tired of having to endure extreme labor market distress with no real end in sight. Congress should quickly pass the three pieces of job legislation currently being considered, the tax extenders bill, including the COBRA and uh, state assistance that the House removed, two, the Harkin Amendment that will uh, assist in preserving education jobs, and three, the Local Jobs for America Act introduced by Representative Miller. You should note that the unemployment projections that show we'll have 10 percent unemployment a year from now actually assume that we're going to be having these unemployment insurance and COBRA benefits and state relief in their models. So doing that doesn't, you know, will leave us with very high unemployment. We need to do much more. I think it would be great to even provide more relief to states because as states cut back, that's essentially anti-stimulus. The, the provisions being considered only offset around a third of the contractionary effects of state cutbacks. Let's talk about assisting the uh, long-term unemployed. Uh, many will be exhausting their benefits, their 99 weeks, around 3 million this year alone. The rest of the safety net has come to look more like a cement floor. TANF uh, has been unresponsive to the recession. In Michigan, our hardest hit state, uh, caseloads are down even though we have extreme unemployment. Food stamps, thanks to the Recovery Act, have been made available without the normal three-month limit for able-bodied adults without dependents, and caseloads have increased. But the average benefit is slight and doesn't really do enough. By the end of 2011, we will, uh, the Labor Department estimates that 13 million Americans will exhaust all entitlement to unemployment compensation. Even if half of them find jobs, that's six million who will exhaust with no source of income. I recommend that Congress either have another tier of UI in very hard-hit states or a, enact a special means-tested program of emergency 
cash assistance. Until sufficient jobs are created, the number of long-term jobless Americans who have exhausted their unemployment compensation will continue to soar. I urge you not to turn your backs on them in their time of need. We cannot accept the unacceptable. We must generate millions more jobs and get unemployment moving sharply downward. And we must help those not able to locate work because of circumstances they do not control. And I might, uh, I want to thank Mr. Linder for uh, quoting me, saying that the private sector is not healthy. And I look forward to engaging you on the issues of uh, why we have the high deficits we have and what role they play in the economy. Thank you.